may have been, I didn't go back to look at the notes of the message, but I felt led to preach this message, and it's, it's different, I, I'm not sure. I know maybe part how the other went, but I think it's very important that for the Lord led to. Uh, I just said that to say, in case you're marking the Bible and got me preaching on that, if I know that you know that I know that I've preached out before, then I just go ahead and do it. <laughs> but if, if I think you don't know that I know that you know that. <laughs> Say what? We know nothing. So, so if you're confused enough now, I'll, I'll move on. But uh, talking about as the country turns from God, there's no other way to say it. Nations turn from God, even churches turn from God. That's right. That's right. And that, in fact, is where all trouble begins when the messages begin to turn away from God. That's what happened to the Pharisees in the days of Christ. Mm -hmm. They had turned from God. They had turned to their own self. And, but uh, when your life is based on God, Satan loses. When life is based on any other thing, Satan wins. It's real simple, real true. Mm -hmm. So if a nation... Existence is based on God, the nation wins. When the existence of a nation is based on any other thing before God, the nation loses. A nation that forgets God shall be turned into hell, as the book of Psalms would say. So, I want us to keep remembering God, and Satan wins by slowly trying to remove God out of the nation, moves out of the history books, removes us all from the political realm, removes us, keeps removing a little bit at a time. That's the way Satan does your life. He removes, a, he wants to remove, if he can, a little bit of the time of your basis and of your life based on God. So verse uh, 26 through 31 of John 20. John 20, Verses 26 through 31. Uh, familiar scripture has been said many times at least a part of this, but I, I want to look at it not about Thomas, but about us. 26. And after eight days again, his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the door being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. Reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that believing ye might have life through his name. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your love and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your great grace. And Lord, for saving our soul, making us whole. We thank you, Lord, for the presentation this morning. Lord, uh, veterans and God, we truly are patriotic. And, and uh, God, we just thank you. Lord, for all that has been done. God, most of all, though above all, all things, we always thank you, Lord, for your Son, Jesus Christ, that gave his life. And Lord, I've never heard taps. I have many, many services by the graveside and military and taps are played. And Lord, I never hear them. But I don't really just feel that deep down inside of the sacrifices that was given. So we thank you. We love you. And Lord, we pray now that you may touch physically, that we may preach the word of God in the strength of the flesh, but above all, God, anoint spiritually, may we preach thy word 
in the power of the Spirit, time together the loose ends and fill them void we leave because of our inabilities. Let thy word go out freely. We thank you, we love you. In thy name we ask, dear Jesus. Amen. 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 As part of the presentation going <laughs> on when it uh, <coughs> came to the food, I thought I grew up Clarence Blackwell with Don Blackwell's brother and he led the service at Rainbow for many, many years and he was a prisoner of World War II in the German prison camp. And I heard him say it first of all and my mom, you ask her about it, she'll repeat it a hundred times. But Clarence Blackwell was talking one time about people who said, I, I don't like that. He said, all I can tell you is you just never been hungry enough. Never been hungry enough. That I, I just won't eat that. He said, you've never been hungry enough. Mm -hmm. And he didn't have to say anything else, just the prison camps. Basically in those days, the prison camps would eat, as you know, potato peeling or grass or bugs or anything you can get. He said, all I can say, you've never been hungry enough. Mm -hmm. I want to partake of the gospel. And I never have told the Lord, I'm not hungry enough. I really don't want to know any more about your gospel. Or I don't like that part. <laughs> mm. I want my hunger to always be hungry enough. Mm -hmm. He that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Mm -hmm. I always want my hunger to be hungry enough. I always want to appreciate the hunger. Now, I'll eat almost if you invite me and feed me. I'll eat about anything you feed me. I'll eat meat liver, but I hate it. <laughs> I'll eat about anything. Now, some things I just like better than others. <laughs> But I'll try about anything, but you know what? I can't remember. I think a while back I tell you something. Oh my goodness, is that bad? <laughs> well, I was in the hospital, a real high blood pressure there a couple of years ago, and, and of course they had on a liquid diet. And I've been bleeding all this, and every day they bring me this whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and for three days I've drank bowls every day, and I never did forget what it was. <laughs> but hey. <laughs> The only thing I got, I eat every bite or drink every bite, every sip on my tray. I never send back food. <laughs> but I always want my hunger for the gospel to be hungry enough. But out of the first 30 and 31. Mm -hmm. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples. I, 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 we read that and I don't think we uh, really grasp it, don't really think about it, but if all the things that Jesus did, we get blessed out of so many things he did, but the Bible writer John truly said he did a whole lot more than this. Right, right. <laughs> he said, which are not written in this book, but these are written and it gives an explanation that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ. Right. Not that you might believe that Jesus was anything else, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was a miracle worker, but those that were healed still died. He was a, a sea comber, but the sea would also have waves later on. And after that, many other storms has come up on the Sea of Galilee. <laughs> but those that were saved, amen, they continue His Word. That's forever. So we might believe that He died in Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through His name. So what we preach on, that ye may believe. Now from time to time, it's possible that Satan will try to get you to doubt the existence of God. Sure. Sure. Not only your salvation, from time to time, especially in the world we live on, I speak a lot about the, the evolution and people our age. I saw somebody tell me the other day, say, oh, that don't make any doubt. That don't affect anything. I say, oh, no. It affects our young people. It don't affect me because we grew up without it. But when you're taught from the time you're young, hey, I, I think the Genesis is wrong. The Genesis chapter 1 through chapter 5 or 6 is all wrong. Once you take out one page of the Bible, then you don't mind removing another page. That's right. That's right. 
So Satan gets you a doubt. The authenticity of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Gets you a doubt. Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. He gets you a doubt huh, that there was a worldwide flood. Yeah? He gets you a doubt because huh, you look at the mountains. Huh? So you begin to realize, though, without the flood, creation has no explanation of the way the world is. Without the flood. Amen. The science uh, and, and the blood is used for all the things that it did and broke across. Understand that God created a whole new world uh, of the blood. Uh, as I said the other day, I hadn't said it before, I'll say it again. Before the blood, there was no need for a drainage system. There was rain. <laughs> After the flood, he made the drainage system. He hooved up mountains. He broke continents apart. And then he created a drainage system. That everything drains into the ocean, evaporates out, and rain falls on the earth, or rain or snow, or whatever. But the flood, if you don't believe in the flood, it doesn't answer. We have no answer for so much. We look at the flood and say, this is why this came with form. In a short time, we look at the flood and say, this is why there are fossils up here in this layer. We look at the flood. So the existence of the flood. And I'm glad they're, they're sinus. And I tell people all the time, you know, that we memorize all that, memorize all that. And I've preached them for years. But they're a place in creation, institute of creation research that has doctors of science and physics. And they put out all kinds of information that is scientific based. Uh, uh, evolution is terrible science. <laughs> it says you go from disorder to order. Yeah. And that's against the second law of thermodynamics. As far as that, it's terrible science. But our young people don't hear anything else. They are told they just got it and said, well, they must be wrong. I'm just simply going to believe. But the reason you can't believe, uh, you don't have to do it by blind faith. Uh, uh, creation science uh, is much better than evolution science. Uh, hey, uh, look around you. But anyway, that we might believe. Uh, uh, God doesn't expect us to believe uh, without having a reason to believe. He said, these are written that you may believe. Mm -hmm. So we see that. So sometimes, Satan will try and get you to deny the even the existence of God. He'll definitely try to get you to see, not be able to see uh, uh, God working in your life. Uh, you want to be like Job sometimes. Where is God? Uh, and the Lord told me some time ago, uh, many years ago, uh, I was reading Job all once he spoke to me. Uh, he said, Clarence, uh, I want you to understand something. Job did not know where I was. Uh, Job did not know what was going on. Uh, uh, Job had no understanding. He had not a book to pick up to go by. Uh, it's the earliest of written books. Uh, he had not the law. He had not anything. Job uh, didn't know where I was, but understand I knew where Job was. Right. <laughs> and ever since then, when Satan tried to say, God is not interested in your prayer. God is not really working in your life. Oh yeah, you saw him get that person a new car. You saw that person get a new job. Or you saw that person healthy. Or you saw this person that. But in your life, hey, I, I can say, look, I, I may not know what's going on, but my God knows what's going on. Hey, I, I'm going to believe. So sometimes it's hard to overcome these temptations when your faith is already a weak and hurting. It's hard to overcome these temptations. So I tell people all the time, in times of little faith, in times of little faith, and I'll, I'll, I'll real, illustrate this. One time, somebody asked me, how do you know you're saved? I said, well, I was there. I guess I'll know. It, I mean, it's just... They said, but how do you know? And, you know, they didn't quite accept that. They said, well, how do you know? I said, I felt it in my heart. I asked God, I felt it. They didn't quite... But how did you know? I say, I know I'm saved because the Word of God says I'm saved. Amen. That was the final answer. <laughs> That's the absolute answer. Amen. You might debate about feelings. You might debate about the other thing. But the Word of God says I'm saved. How does it say I'm saved? Because I believe. I confess. I ask Him to come into my life. And the Word of God says, if you do these things, you are saved. And I keep His command. So it's the Word above everything else. Amen. 
Right. It's the Word. So these are written that we may believe. Uh, oh man, uh, amen. Uh, and so I go back sometimes. I tell people when you like faith, uh, or when your faith begins to struggle. Uh, and I, I preached one time many years ago, having a bad faith day. I don't want anyone here to think, oh well, Clarence has never had a bad faith day. <laughs> I don't want to look around. I know beyond a shadow of doubt, everyone in here has had a bad faith day from time to time. You have a bad faith day. Uh, amen. Uh, oh, uh, but when you have a bad, bad faith day, uh, I can go back to my salvation. Uh, I can go back uh, and realize I had the faith to be saved. Uh, realize I had the faith uh, to believe in God the Creator. Uh, I had the faith to believe in Jesus Christ. Uh, I had the faith to believe if I confess. He saved me. Uh, and I remember what I asked. Uh, and I remember believing. And I remember uh, Him saving me. I, I so I use that faith to go on to the next step. Mm, I go back to the faith that it took for me to get saved. Now the end destination of this life is much too serious to be taken lightly. Mm. The end destination of this life is much too serious to be taken lightly. All rerouting, most of y'all use maps now in your cell phones, I guess, don't you? To get anywhere, you all use maps or whatever. <laughs> and sometimes, uh, when I, when they first came out, when they first came out, I loved to aggravate. The only real talent I have in life is aggravate. <laughs> I'm pretty talented in that. The only real talent I have. So my daughter got a car. It had the map thing. I said, "Look at this, Dad. Look what this thing will do." So it said uh, she put in a, a, a little thing up there in Fed County. And, and it said, you know, go out where I said, it said turn left, let's turn right. I wanted to see if I could aggravate the thing. <laughs> Every time they would tell me to turn one way, I'd turn the other way. <laughs> I wanted to aggravate it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now, Siri, you can aggravate. My kids used to get on Siri all the time, keep asking a question. My grandkids, I mean, and they keep asking, well, I'd be in a car, they'd be going somewhere, they keep asking, keep asking, a little bit serious. said, I'm not talking to you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that gets kind of scary. I've heard her say that more than once. They had a great talent, an uh, aggravation. Uh, they said, Sir, I'm not answering any more questions. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the thing kept rerouting me. Whatever I did, it was still. Rerouting. Well, all rerouting down here. All rerouting has to take place down here. Amen. Hey, on the other side, uh, when you die, uh, amen, there is no more rerouting. Uh, uh, once you go down, uh, there is no more rerouting. Uh, uh, so if you're not on the right road, uh, that leads to life. Uh, you have to reroute down here. Uh, and you have the capability of doing that down here. There is no rerouting. <laughs> On the other side. <laughs> now I'll give you one of my clients very wise statements that took <laughs> years of study and much research to give this. <laughs> and some of y'all may not know this. It seems like some people in life don't know this. You can't plant potatoes and expect to get turnips. <laughs> <laughs> or either way around. You don't harvest turnip potato by planting turnips. Oh, wow. Anybody knows that. Well, guess what? Whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Mm -hmm. If you sow it to the flesh, shall all the flesh reap corruption. Huh? If you sow it to the Spirit, shall all the Spirit reap life everlasting. Huh? Uh, so, yeah, it seems like a simple statement, huh? but it's a true statement. The way you're planted huh? or the way you come up huh? in 1 Corinthians 15, huh? if we're planted with a Christian, we come up a Christian. That's right. Yeah. Don Blackwell used to be the message. I heard him preach it quite a few times. It was kind of a special message. I heard him in revival. And, and uh, he talked about seeds. But one of the seeds, he had apple seeds and different seeds here. But one of the things he had was macaroni. <laughs> now, when you plant macaroni, <laughs> you don't get anything. It's man made. <laughs> Amen. When you use man made salvation, you don't get anything. 
Nothing is raised up. There's no life within the micaroni. There's not a seed within the micaroni. There's not a life. There's not a DNA. But in that seed you plant, if you plant whatever seed, a golden delicious, simply in Clay County, I'll go with that one, okay? <laughs> Now I might go to Mike and Toss or something else in another county. I, I dare not go against Golden Delicious and Pollen Seedling. <laughs> the DNA's in the seed. You plant a corn, whatever type of corn you plant for the garden this year, the DNA is in the seed. Is that DNA designed for the corn to be that tall and ears that long? Or ears to be white? Or ears to be golden? Or ears to be multicolored? All of us in the DNA, in that seed. Oh, but we see these things and we have to know the law of the harvest. Whatever you all plant, that's what you're going to reap. So, go back to our text verses. Thomas spent some days, maybe eight days. I used to say eight days on belief, but we as assume that Thomas I heard about the, the after, immediately after. Uh, he spent eight days, after eight days again, uh, uh, the disciples were there. So Thomas at least spent some days, uh, whenever he talked to him, uh, he spent a week or so uh, in unbelief. Uh, hey, uh, uh, Thomas knew that Jesus had raised uh, Lazarus from the dead, but here was a problem. It was Jesus that raised him. But who's going to raise Jesus? So he said, unless I see. Unless I see. I don't slam Thomas. We've all been there. We've all been there. We all have had the doubt. We all had the battle of the doubting. We all had to say, well, I need to see. Have you ever said, Lord, just show me you're here? Lord, just, it was just so, and He'll show me in many ways sometimes. I, I don't do it for temptation. I, I mean, I've said this so often. I've been mean, uh, uh, at the bedside of many people are close to death, uh, or many people, families, uh, amen, uh, or things that happen. I see it time and time again. Uh, uh, for God's people, He'll show you that He's there. Mm -hmm. He'll give you something, He'll show you that He's there. It doesn't mean they're not going to die. It doesn't mean they're going to be healed immediately. They may or may not be, but He'll show you that He's there. And maybe He is choosing to heal you. But He'll let you know He's there. And once I know that He's there, once I know that He has it under control, hey, I'm going to fully trust Him. He'll let me know that He's there. So Thomas, amen, He did see and He did believe. And he never stopped believing. Right. I don't know why anyone would stop believing. I don't know why anyone would stop believing that ye may believe. How would, why would we stop believing? I realize things happen. I realize disaster happened in life. I realize hurts happen in life. I realize a, a failure happened in life. Oh, but we need to still go back to the words of, of Peter uh, and the disciple. Uh, oh, will you also go away uh, in John 6 and 66? Uh, time in a disciple uh, because of a hard setting, because of a hardship, you might say. Uh, amen. Uh, they walk back. Uh, will you also to go away. Where are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to go to that simplicity to stay. Mm -hmm. Because what you're seeing, what you're feeling, what you're not understanding, what you don't know about, it seems like you're out there all along. Amen. But He gave me something that I may believe. And every time, I, at one time I preached a, a, a message, uh, let me interrupt this trial with a blessing. Uh, let me interrupt this trial with a blessing. Uh, and I found that in life, uh, if I'm going through a trial, uh, every time I'm going through a trial, uh, hey, uh, if I depend on God uh, and I hold on God, uh, oh, uh, every once in a while, He'll give me a blessing. They'll give me a blessing. It might have been Buddy Martin. I said this a while back. I, I didn't look it up, but said one time that God got him in his hands. He said, when the storm you're raging, God holding him in his hand. Every once in a while, he'll, say, he'll peek in there and say, you all right in there, buddy? <laughs> I always like that. 
Hey, when I go through, he's got me in his hands. Every once in a while, he'll say, are you doing all right? Are you still doing all right? And you're going through tests in the hospital a lot of time. They say, you doing all right? Steve, I'm least you run thousands of emergency calls. A lot of time, I guarantee you, they said, you doing all right? You'll be all right. Hold on. Hold on. That's what Jesus does to me so often. That you may believe. Now, so just as Thomas hadn't seen and yet hadn't seen Christ yet in the flesh, but someday we will. Just as Thomas, I haven't seen Christ yet in the flesh, but someday a man will. So very quickly, then you may believe. I look at three great things, and these are not going to take ten minutes each. Romans 1 and 20. Beautiful scripture. Very important scripture. He said, For the invisible things from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things which are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that we are without excuse. That's why I keep saying this. Why He created the world like He did. For me to say all this came about by accident is utterly foolish. I don't have enough faith to believe that could all come by accident. <laughs> not, not when it made a billion different things. Mm -hmm. With a billion different uh, spatial things that they do. The nature uh, uh, amazes me. Uh, it amazes me. It amazes me how God made trees uh, uh, to love uh, uh, carbon dioxide and give off oxygen uh, and keep the whole oxygen uh, balanced around 20, 21, 22 percent. It is amazing. God created the world like it does in every single aspect. Water is so amazing. It's amazing. It's, I think it might be the only thing that exists on earth in all three forms. Water, vapor, and liquid, liquid, and, and vapor, and, and, and uh, solid in all three forms. It's amazing. When it freezes, it expands. I've worked in the industry and many times uh, I would heat something to expand uh, uh, to get a bearing on a shaft, to get a drive uh, that is cut under size, that is designed to do that. And oftentimes I would free strain the shrinker to, uh, to get a fit inside of something. Uh, amen. But water expands. <coughs> It sustains life. It expands. It cleanses. It, it gives everything. It expands. Why did it expand? Because if it didn't, the first freeze, uh, all the aquatic life would die. Uh, hey, uh, if it uh, sank to the bottom, uh, <coughs> it freeze up from the bottom, uh, all the aquatic life would die. God made water made. Just simple water. He made amazing. He made amazing. Then it amazing me that my grandpa would have thought you could, in a, in a store, in a, a quick shop, you pay a dollar for that, a dollar fifty. <laughs> if I told my grandpa you could sell water for a dollar fifty, he would say, <laughs> And we got the same water as far as I know is what you started with. <laughs> we don't create water, God gave us water. <laughs> We got the same water we started with. You say, boy, you like to go to Jordan and get baptized? I said, I figure I'm getting baptized in Jordan. I'm at Elk River. I, hey, man, it just keeps recycling. <laughs> so that you may believe. So the invisible thing, He gave us a creation uh, that is so uh, screams out. Uh, there is a creator. Uh, there is a designer. Uh, no one, uh, everyone is without. He makes us a place that you're completely without excuse. Yet evolution. Yeah. And to be a true evolutionist, you have to be an atheist to think that God didn't, that it came by chance. It came by God. Hmm. The eyewitnesses in the book of Luke, in the first chapter, oh, like we, Luke, and nobody ever hardly quotes this. I, I used to use them time and time in the message, but Luke 1 through 4. For as much as men have taken in hand to set forth, in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. Now Luke was not an eyewitness. He said, For a Muslim men had take forth, had taken a hand and set forth a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. Even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things 
from the very first to right unto the order most excellent Theophilus, that thou mayest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. The eyewitnesses. When Christ came out of the grave, He came out, He had kept appearing to them. He kept appearing. So they didn't have to say, well, he, He's not here. He must have went away. I believe He went away. I, I believe He ascended to heaven. I, remember what He told He did more than that. He kept appearing to them. And then when he did ascend to heaven, he was taken up. Amen. They could watch him. I, I, I mean, the light just like a, a helium balloon I, I going up to heaven. <laughs> this probably had nothing to do with this, but it's in my mind. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I fired a truck the other day, a couple of men driving, and they had him in the back of that balloon, helium balloon. Well, they just had him tied in the back, and beep, 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 beep. One to go floating out. <laughs> Beep, 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 beep. Another one floating out. And it had dates on it. Beep, 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 beep. Then they drove up. There's going to be a parade, I guess, for the kids graduating. So the men drove up. You women would have never done it that way. They drove up. I thought, they have got one balloon that they're going to tie on the truck. You silly men. We do silly things. Amen. I, I, but I visualize, I'm sorry that was there. I, I visualize. Amen. I, I Christ going up. Hey, they could see him. I, I, so there's eyewitness. The, the word itself gives us the answer to all those things that we seek understanding in. The word itself proves itself. Mm -hmm. No other book to be written like this book by more than 40 different authors. Mm over a period of 1,500 years, going back 2,500 years before that, but over a period of 1,500 years, and didn't even know that he's writing one book that would be assembled together. No one is the impossibility. So he gives us the eyewitnesses before mm -hmm. Calvary and all that, eyewitnesses after Calvary. Mm -hmm. He gives us uh, the Word itself, and he gives us the creation, a threefold way that we may believe. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you and we love you. Pray, God, you may take these words and apply them to our hearts so we may always glorify your name. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for the service this morning, God, and all of the things that have been given. We're looking forward, Lord, to the lesson and God teaching out your precious word. And Lord, we thank you and we love you. In thy name we pray. Amen. 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 Give a song, have any need of prayer, come and pray.